Hello, Religion Unplugged audience. Thanks for joining us. This is Matthew Peterson, the John McClanlish Phillips intern at Religion Unplugged. I'm speaking today with Hilmar Arn Hilmerson, High Priest of the Alsa True Fellowship. Hilmar, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me today. Well, thank you for the wonderful invitation. Um, so just to start off, I, uh, you know, a lot of our listeners are not as affiliated um, with um, pagan ideas so much as they are with um, the more major religions. Uh, so yes. I'd love if you could just kind of identify the core beliefs of the religion in, in its most basic form. Uh, what is it that uh, you guys believe? Well, uh, Aussatru, which is actually not a, a very good name for it, it's a Danish term from the mid 19th century, is basically the old Scandinavian heathen religion that was practiced in Scandinavia and Northern Europe okay. until, until the advent of Christianity. Uh, Iceland converted in the year 1000 to Christianity. But there was a wonderful compromise that said that you would allow to practice in secret and you would allow to be allowed to do certain things like eating horse meat, which was banned by the uh, church. And so in the end, it sort of went underground, but changed itself into poetry. So we preserved the old poems, the old stories uh, that were written down uh, later. Uh, but they were written down just of, uh, under the guise that they were teaching young poets how to make poetry. And you had to know your mythology to, to use the metaphors that were necessary in poetry. So uniquely among uh, the nations in Scandinavia, we preserved the po poetry and all other things, whereas everything was lost in Norway, Sweden and Denmark. There are a few runestones that have uh, referred to some of these things, but some of them wouldn't make sense unless you knew the context. So uh, there's one poetry in the Attic poems that makes sense of a, a runestone in Sweden and another one in Norway because... So in a way, it, it's been very much something that has lived with the Icelandic nation, but we didn't dare to do anything with it until 1872, when we got uh, freedom of religion. And then it was basically uh, Icelandic students that wanted to party, and they found out that the uh, name of the god Thor rhymes with Bjor or Beer. So uh, it was pretty much like that. People would <laughs> pay the service to the myths, and they would use them in... in, in everyday life and also because our language is so infused with the myths that we use phrases from, from the, 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 uh, the old heathen poetry without knowing it. Wow. So but then in 1872, uh, we were officially uh, revived and we got a governmental and official recognition in 1973. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I saw online that there, are, um, in Al true there's there's a fair amount of people who, um, like to be involved for the historical and heritage reasons, and then there's a separation, uh, for for people who literally believe in, um, the the poetry and believe it to be true. Correct? Is there there's kind of both camps, or is, am I misunderstanding? Oh, there are both camps, really. Uh, I, I think you find camps elsewhere than in Iceland. I, I, I think, basically, in Iceland, we are so uh, shy about our literal beliefs, we never really talk about it. Mm. And uh, certain people who profess to be believe because they believe in the powers of nature, they are the ones who can be very theistic at times, and they have, in a way, a personal god or a goddess. But it's something you, you don't you don't direct people to certain sets of beliefs. They, they usually find them, themselves 
So it's it's not a revealed religion as we have the mo mm. with the monotheistic faiths. There are no no full truths, whether the nine or twenty nine or thirty. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. That that helps me. That helps me understand um, kind of where you're coming from better. And did you do you think this was something? Uh, does a lot of this poetry was it stuff you kind of knew growing up, or when did you kind oh, yeah. of? Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I was brought up with it because there were people in in my family who were doing research into some of this, and uh, I was given the Icelandic sagas to read when I was a young boy. So I was steeped in the lore uh, by the age of twelve. And then when I was 14, the uh, Oxford Society was formed, and I waited until my 16th birthday when I could join. Hmm. So something that's been with me yeah. for most of my life. Yeah, very cool. So you've been with it as soon as you could, basically. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yes, I couldn't wait. I, I and... was there at 9 o'clock when it was opened. Yeah, that's very cool. And I see that now you're... Uh, your title is High Priest, yes. um, correct? Is that the correct title? No, it, it would rather be High Chieftain, which is, high chieftain. The, yeah, which is the academic term, but uh, I don't have a five stone or a, a chieftain of what, I, I don't know. So it's something, it's, it's a term that only exists in Iceland. So Okay. Uh, and people must understand what I am, so... Yeah. So, and then, what does the what are the responsibilities do you have um, as high chieftain? What what does that role entail? It does entail that I I sanctify four cardinal gatherings every year. Okay. And that I I sort of uh, I am the first among equals in certain decision making, but uh, in a way, it's a very democratic society, and usually I do what I'm told to do. Yeah. Okay. That's very cool. So it's not, in no way is it um, like a very, a super powerful position or something like that. It's so, uh, I sometimes wish it was, but, but uh, <laughs> I can't speak ex cathedra like the Pope. So uh, I, I try to convince people with very lucid arguments if that is needed. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, High chieftain, though, even though it's not really a power situation, are you technically? Um, I don't know. Is that like the highest rank you could be, if that makes sense, or is there? Yeah, yeah, no, there's no rank above that really. But as I say, it's um, it's in a way an honorary position, but it doesn't okay. bestow any special powers upon cool. you. Okay, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So then I'd love to hear about the um, the Asatru Temple. Sorry, Asatru yeah. Temple. I'm gonna get that right. Um, the Asatru Temple. I know that the construction has been del delayed several times, but um, uh, where are you, where are you guys at right now? Uh, I'm actually sitting in the part of the temple that has been finished, which okay, is cool. the Mungo area, and cool. what. It's lacking. We've done all the concrete work, which means that the foundation is all in place, and the the th thing missing now is a dome over the uh, 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 ritual area. Okay. And, uh, we're building that in the next two or three years because uh, uh, first we were hindered by the big financial crisis in Iceland in right. two thousand eight and certain things. But we just built gradually, and yeah. uh, we, we haven't taken a loan or anything. We just built for the money we have. Yeah, and where where does that money come from? How is it being funded? Is it just pooled? Well, or... No, uh, Iceland has a specific system like uh, the Scandinavian countries. Uh, you get a, a certain religious tax. Uh, okay. So every member, in a way, does contribute by his or her uh, taxes. So it's a nominal, uh, it's not a very big figure that we get, but it helps that we are growing. Yeah. So each year 
we we get this this money paid by the government okay that's okay that, that makes a lot of sense and then and we, um we don't ask for that types or we don't go around and asking for contributions but people are sometimes generous with us yes okay yeah that, and it so you said um also true is growing um you know how how many people are is there a count is there a count right now that you have or roughly that's, how many the last count we had was uh that we are well over seven thousand nice. that is those who were registered but uh, it's not uh, you have to be uh, 18 when you start to uh, but so uh, we are actually the largest non-Christian denomination in Iceland, in a way. We're second place after Christianity. So uh, it's the national church, and then we have the Catholics, and then we have the two free Lutheran churches, and then it's us. So we're pretty high up. And it doesn't sound Yeah, no, no, but I, I'm sure that... Um... I mean, Iceland on its own is not a large country population-wise, so I think 7,000 is still significant, no? We, we, we've we been punching up over weight in, in the arts, so why not in religion? Yeah, right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and then, you know, those those other churches, these Christian churches and the Church of Iceland, has there been any kind of, like, pushback or animosity between you guys, or has that been... Um, okay. We uh, we have a, a sort of an interreligious forum uh, where we have uh, the members of most of the uh, uh, sort of Icelandic faiths or, or the faiths that are practiced in Iceland where we meet and we convene and, and try to build up a, a sort of mutual support and uh, so that has been very effective and that was done to the late bishop of, of Iceland, the late Karl Sigurdsson, who died this week and uh, who was a great man and uh, oh. a friend. Of oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So yeah. No, but, but uh, uh, Iceland, we're just like a small family. Uh, mm. It's there's no really, it's not good to be isolationist in Iceland because yeah. there's no world. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Um, and so I'd like to know kind of uh, what what sorts of things are you hoping to do in the temple once it's completed? What kinds of um, like what activities uh, are you not able to do as well now uh, that the temple would help with? Uh, oddly enough, I mean, it's probably funerals because uh, we don't have space for our funeral, so we, we use a, a chapel and a church which are not sancti sanctified, but are also used by, say, the the, the Buddhists and the, uh, the Muslims and other religions. Mm -hmm. And we would very much like to have our own place where we could come together and celebrate, in, in that case, uh, a, a life of someone who has passed. So it's for us to have a center is, is important. And in a, in a way, our activities are pretty similar to uh, our sister religion, Hinduism, okay. where people come together and they cook food and they change diapers and talk mm -hmm. and all sorts of communal things. So it would be very similar to that. Okay. Yeah. And, and why do you consider Hinduism to be the sister religion? Um, above uh, that, uh, because it's an Indo-Aryan religion, uh, okay. they have the same theogony, and we actually have the same gods as they had in Persia. So, if you trace trace the linguistics through Sanskrit into Icelandic, you find that Indra is the same word as Thor, and the same god as Thor. He produces thunder. He is a dragon slayer, and. and and so okay. uh, these are quite related. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, and then, do you think? Are you hoping that this space would be large enough to, you know, potentially hold as many as you know six thousand seven? Do you think it's no, going to be a no. big enough? No, no, no. So nobody could. Okay. You could never have everybody there. No, no. Okay. 
but how uh, how likely would that even be that you know that you could get everybody um to even like agree on a time like like do, how many people do you expect to use the space uh every week once it's finished i mean we're talking less than 100 people i think okay. basically but we, we 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 do have lectures where we have about 70 to 100 people attending and the ceremony is uh, which can be bigger so okay we don't stop. Uh, we're not building that big. Uh, in the end, uh, the whole whole complex of buildings will, will be eight hundred square meters, uh, which is, yeah, I think fair enough. Yeah, that's yeah, that's very cool. Um, now I also I've seen online that there's been a really frustrating situation, um, because you guys the the word also true. Um, is also being used by a white supremacist group that you guys have openly spoken out yeah. against and have spoken, you know, for diversity and things like that. Um, how has how has that experience been? Has that been really frustrating? And what, what sorts of uh, I, I, have you had I, any? I, yeah, at times it was frustrating. I mean, yeah. it's it's very funny because I'm just minding my own business and and attending to my own garden, and I suddenly get some really stupid letter saying I'm a race traitor or whatever other terms they can come up right. with. Which I think is pretty rich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I, I've also been called uh, sort of a Zionist, which seems to be a very derogatory term. So uh, in a way, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty proud that uh, stupid people like that see me as the enemy. Because... Uh, <laughs> I don't like anything that they do, and I fiercely oppose it. Totally, totally. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. And and is um how how politically active is Alsa True? Is that a part of the beliefs, or is that kind of stay out of it? We, we just stay out of politics entirely. Nice. And, uh, it's it's a spiritual thing, and it's a it's a personal thing, and politics have nothing to do with it. No. I mean, there's. A, of course, been a, an appropriation of some of the also true symbols. I mean, sadly, and a, a symbol that we can actually call a, a Hindu or a Buddhist symbol or, or a Shinto symbol, like uh, the swastika. Mm, I mean, right. that is, uh, we don't use that. So, right. and, and it's untouchable, and you can't reform that symbol, sadly. Yeah. And what what did the swastika mean when it was you know b before the Nazis ruined it? Uh, nothing much actually. It was called the Hammer of Thor. I mean, it was okay. known as a clip uh, 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 that we had in, in, in the, from from uh, uh, the late Stone Age. I mean, you see it as a petrol clip in Norway or Sweden. So it wasn't really. A, it, it was a solar symbol. And it's, it's universal, as I say. You find it in India, you find it in China, right. you find it in Japan. Right. And what are the other, what kinds of other um, sacred symbols do you guys use now that, you know, the ones that you can still use? What else is sacred to you? Uh, the Hammer of Thor is usually okay. what, what, what was a symbol that people use to identify themselves. And you, we have lots of archaeological uh, proofs of that. I wear a symbol that is probably a cross with a polar bear hat. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, but we call it the Hammer of Thor. It, it's a replica of, of something that was found uh, in the north of Iceland. It comes from around the year 1000. So maybe it's a cross, but for me it's a Hammer of Thor. Cool, yeah. And, you know, while we're on Thor, I've got to ask, I mean, with with the Marvel coverage of Thor, has that been, is that at all um, frustrating to you or is it just kind of fun and you're you're okay with it? I'm okay with it because uh, there's been lots of worse things done <laughs> yeah. taking, taking these things. I mean, I, I, I would take issue with 
some of the operas of Richard Wagner or the use of certain heavy metal groups of the mythology. Sure. It didn't change anything. So, yeah. I mean, we are not really into being offended. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's a pity that poor Kenneth Branagh uh, didn't realize that his assistant director on so many films is married to an Icelandic woman and he been gotten to the material too much much better hmm. or more right than he did, but he, he decided to make the girls into Shakespearean characters, which does make sense. Interesting. Well, I think I think we've covered most of the things I wanted to talk through, but I will just I'll just ask like two more questions and they're they're pretty broad, so take away what you will with them. Um, but what sorts of things do you think people most commonly misunderstand about Ao and and uh, and your beliefs? And what do you what, what kinds of corrections in the minds of people would you like to to make if you could? Uh, what surprises me is that uh, that some people actually think that this is something to do with a, a warrior cult or something, and uh, and it's. And what we the problem is that uh, in the nineteenth century you had these little groups in Germany, which described themselves as folk folkish in German, uh, trying to go back to their Germanic roots, which they did by reverse engineering the old Icelandic sources into Germany, and that was really a sad appropriation because a lot of these people were putting their own gloss onto uh, and, and onto the mythology. Yeah. And the, this thing is very strange because uh, the gods are a perfect example of stuff, a multicultural society. We have two families of gods who decided to intermarry instead of uh, waging endless wars. We have other sets of beings which are some of invisible beings that we, the elves, that can be the ancestors or, or something. And it's all, all integrated into a very wholesome, uh, wonderful, open mythology. And even the gods themselves are, are the offspring of the giants, who are in a way the, uh, uh, represent the uh, forces of chaos. And in the sense, what we see in the mythology is, is when chaos becomes cosmos, when the dissolution uh, and, and 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 all these things, uh, chaotic things, become order. So it's all 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 about harmony and how, how to keep things balanced. And I, I don't think that war or killing is 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 something to be glorified. It's terrible. And I think that people realized that back then. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And do you think um, perhaps the growth in interest in paganism and Alcetru specifically um, stems from people's unrest with the lack of harmony in the world as tensions increase and as everybody is yelling I, I at each other? That, yeah, also because it's a very nature-based religion. It's about respect for nature and trying to make things better. So I think these are trying times uh, that when we see things in, in decline. And here in Iceland, we are seeing our glaciers melting. Oh, wow. We are seeing quite big changes in the weather, uh, as as you do as well. Yes. So uh, I, I think uh, a faith or a world view that makes you live in harmony with nature is something that man can't need. Totally. Totally. So then the last thing I'm just going to ask is, is there anything else I should know? Anything you wish to tell me that I should have covered and that would have been interesting? No, you're just most welcome to visit us anytime. Oh, awesome. I would love to. I wish yeah. I could have uh, come, come up there for this interview, but not in the budget right now. Um, uh, time will come. Yes. 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 Then thank you for inviting me. No, thank you. I I really enjoyed this, and I'm very fascinated by Ausitru, and and I think you you seem to be, um, 
a very kind person with with good motives and i appreciate that so thank you for talking to me thank you all right